Hi and welcome to this video. My name is Jaime Valencia. I'm with the Cisco PDA Technical Advisors. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to sign certificates with an internal Microsoft CA. I hope you enjoy it. In this video, I'm going to show you how to sign the certificates if you have an internal CA. In this case, I have my CA on a Microsoft Windows 2012 server. And the first thing that we need to do is to go to our CUCM admin page and we need to go to the Always Administration page. Once we're in, we go to Security, Certificate Management, and we click Find. As you can see, the certificates that are self-signed by the system are going to have this in their description. In this case, I'm going to use the Tomcat certificate for this scenario. I'm going to show you how to do a couple of certificates and then you can do the same with the other certificates if you want. We're going to click on the Tomcat certificate that is going to trigger a separate window and we need to click on download.pem file and we're going to download this as a PEM file. We click on save and we have our file here. What we need to do is to change this .pem into a .cer file. I'm going to hit F2 on my keyboard and I'm going to change that .pem into .cer. You're going to get a warning that it might become unusable. You just need to click on yes. And once you do that, you can open this file. Why do we need to do this? Well, because we need to verify some settings that the certificate from CUCM has and you need to emulate those certificates in the new one. We go into details and the things that we need to notice are the signature algorithm, the signature cache algorithm. You need to know the length of the public key. In this case, it's 2048 bits you need to know the key usage and the enhanced key usage. And here we can see that the Tomcat certificate has server authentication and client authentication. And for the key usage, we have the digital signature, key encipherment, date encipherment, and certificate signing. We can close this window and this other window. Once you have downloaded the certificate and you have noticed the key usage, the enhanced key usage, then you need to generate a certificate signing request. You need to click on Generate CSR. This will trigger a new window. You need to choose the right certificate from this drop down menu. In this case, we are going to be doing the Tomcat certificate. In the distribution drop down, you can decide if it's going to be just for this server or if it's going to be a multi server. You need to make sure that the common name is the right one, the domain, the key length and the hash algorithm and we click on generate. As you can see we get a success message and we close this window. The page is going to refresh and we're going to have a new option which is going to be download CSR. We click on it and we get this new window. And here you can see the CSRs that have been created in the system. In this case the only one that we can see is Tomcat because that is the only one that I have created. We choose that one and we click on download CSR. I'm going to download it in the same folder where I have the .cr and then we're going to use that file in my CA. I have downloaded all the certificates to my computer and I have changed the .pem into a .cr and the reason why I told you that it is really important for you to verify the key usage and the enhanced key usage is because it can change from one certificate to the other. As you can see in my screen I right now have two certificates. The one on the left is the Tomcat certificate and the one on the right is the IPsec certificate. As you can see the IPsec certificate has another quality that the Tomcat certificate does not have, which is an IP security end system. And this is the reason why it is really important to verify what are the settings for the certificates that CUCM has, because if you do not use the same settings, it will fail. Once you have downloaded the certificates and generated the CSRs in your server, our next step is go to our CA server. In my lab, I have running over a Windows 2012 server. In order to get to that window, we need to go from our server manager, we click on tools, and then we click on certification authority. 
The first thing that you will see is the name for the CA that you define during the installation. In this case, mine is PDIMX-CA. And the very first thing that we need to do is to adjust our certificate templates. We right click on certificate templates and we click on manage. None of the default templates will have the settings that we need, so we need to use the web server template as a base. We right click on it and we click on duplicate template. What we need to change is under the general tab. In first place, we need to give this a new name. We need to adjust the validity period if necessary. In my lab, I usually set it to 10 years. And then we need to click on the extensions tab. In here, the very first thing we need to do is to adjust the application policies because we only have server authentication and we need client authentication as well. We'll click on edit, then we'll click on add. And we need to choose client authentication. Then we'll click on OK. Make sure that you have the two requirements here. And then we'll click on OK again. Then we need to go to the key usage. We click edit. We are going to choose the signature is proof of origin, non repudiation. And if you remember, the key usage had key encipherment and data encipherment. So we also need to click on allow encryption of user data. Then we need to go to cryptography tab. And we need to make sure that the minimum key size is at the very least the same value that our certificates had. In this case, it's the same value, so we do not need to change it. And we click OK to add the new template. As you can see, it's at the bottom of our certificate templates console, but we cannot use it. There is another step that we need to do in order to enable that. We go back to our CA. We go to certificate templates. We right click. We choose new certificate template to issue. And we need to look for our training template. Once we select it, we click on OK, and it's going to be added. The reason why we do this is because we are going to use a web interface to sign the certificates, and only the templates that are listed here are going to be available. Before I sign and upload the new certificates, I want to show you the certificate error that is shown in my browser. This, as you can see, is the FQDN of the server that we're using, and I'm going to click on CUCM. As you can see, we are getting this error on HTTPS. The reason for that is because I did not have the root certificate that was used to sign this certificate, and that's what we are going to fix. We are going to our certificate authority. The way that you access it is via a browser, and this is the URL that you need to use. In order to sign our certificate, we are going to click on Request a Certificate. Then we're going to click on Advanced Certificate Request. We're going to choose the certificate template that we created, which is the training template. And once you open the CSR on a program like Notepad++, this is what you are going to see. In this case, this is the call manager CSR. And this is the information of the Tomcat CSR. What you need to do is that you need to choose all this information and we're going to copy it into the web page. Once we have that, we click on Submit that is going to sign our certificate. We need to choose base 64 encoded and we click on download certificate. We're going to save it. I usually change the name for the certificate that we are signing, in this case Tomcat, and we click on save. Right now we have this new certificate. Once we open the certificate, we will see that it was issued to cucmtest.pdimx.cisco.com the issuer was PDIMX-CA, which is my lab certificate authority. If we go to the details, we can see that the key usage has the right information, non-repudiation, key encipherment, and data encipherment. We can look for the enhanced key usage, which is going to have server authentication and client authentication. The public key is RSA 2048 bits. The subject is the FQDN of our server. And once again, the issuer is my lab CA. And the certification path is okay because I already have the root certificate installed in my PC. 
and we can click on OK and this is the file that we're going to upload to our CSCM server in order to get rid of this warning. Once we have signed our certificate, we also need the root certificate from our server. In order to do that, we go to our CA web page and we're going to click on download a CA certificate, certificate chain or CRL. We click on base64 and we click on download CA certificate. And we click on save. Once you have the root certificate and the Tomcat certificate, it's time to go back to our OS admin page. We need to log in. And we go to Security, Certificate Management. We click on Find to make sure that we have the certificates here. As you can see, we have the self-signed certificate for Tomcat and the CSR. Now we need to click on Upload Certificate, certificate Chain. We're going to choose Tomcat Trust. We're going to choose the root certificate for our domain, which is this one, pdimx.cr. We're going to click on open and we click upload as you can see we get a success message and also a warning that we need to restart the Cisco Tomcat service via CLI we're going to do that after we upload the certificate for CSM. as you can see right now we have the root certificate for my domain in the Tomcat Trust repository we click on Upload Certificate, Certificate Chain one more time. This time we're going to upload the new Tomcat certificate. We choose it and we click on Open and Upload. We get the success message and the next step is to restart the Cisco Tomcat service via CLI. Once the page refreshes, you could see that you have the new certificate in here. As you can see, this is our new certificate. This is the common name and this is the signing entity. Let's go ahead and restart the Tomcat service. As you can see, I have a PuTTY session open to our new server and we need to issue the command Utils service restart Cisco Tomcat. Let's do that right now. The Tomcat service has been restarted, but it will take a few minutes before we can log in and look at the change. It has been around 10 minutes since I restarted the Cisco Tomcat service. We can try to log in once again. I have restarted my web browser in order to do this. As you can see, right now we are not getting the error message. We are getting a full secure connection with HTTPS. This is the information that you should get if you have done the procedure OK. If you click on certificate information, the certificate will pop up. As you can see, this is the certificate that we uploaded to our server. And once again, the certification path is showing OK because I already have the root certificate installed in my machine. And with this, we conclude the video. The same procedure can be done for all the other certificates. There are just a few things that you need to keep in mind. You always need to verify the key usage and the enhanced key usage to make sure that you are getting the same requirements as CUCM has in their built-in certificates. This is also applicable for many other products like IEM and Presence, Unity Connection, the BCSs, Tippy Conductor, and many others in which you can generate a CSR. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it was useful for you.